Thank you for listening to the Mutual Audio Network. Please don't turn that dial. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. It's time once again for America's favorite show, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Brought to you by drfloyd.com. Our episode this week begins in the galley of the time and spaceship of the world's most brilliant scientist, Dr. Floyd. He is sitting at the breakfast table as his young protege, Dr. Grant, and their faithful robot companion, Chips, serve breakfast to the rest of the crew. Boy, oh boy, am I famished, Dr. Grant. What's on the menu today? Today, Dr. Floyd, we have one of Chips' specialties. It's a big heaping bowl of mush a la sucre. Uh, Dr. Grant, that sounds like mush with sugar. Um, no, Dr. Floyd, this is completely different. I don't know, sounds an awful lot like what we had for breakfast yesterday. Oh no, Dr. Floyd, yesterday we had boulet de maize avec de sucre. That's very different. Uh-huh. And the day before, we had desplome con el azúcar. Yep. And before that, we had potiglia con zucchero. Sure did. A taste of Italy. And if my memory serves me correctly, we had bre mit zucar the day before that. A world of flavors. Dr. Grant, those are all names for mush with sugar. Well, that's all we have left in the pantry, Dr. Floyd. A 10-pound bag of instant mush and a 5-pound bag of sugar. Technic- Nabbit, we need to go shopping, Dr. Grant. Quick, chips to the bridge. Make a time jump to the nearest grocery store. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, Dr. Floyd, you need to eat your breakfast first. Oh, sheesh. Come on now, mush is good for you. It sticks to the ribs. Oh, okay. Our heroes quickly finish their breakfast and are soon zooming around their hometown of Saddle River City. Hey, where did Mom and Pop's hometown grocery store go? Wasn't it on this corner? I believe you're right, Dr. Floyd. It looks like it's a Soggy Bucks coffee stand now. Confound it, those things are everywhere. I'm surprised there's not any in the town. Time and space stream yet. Oh, they're working on it, I'm sure. Well, where are we going to get groceries? <laughs> Chip says that there's a super soggy sugar mega mart right around the corner. Oh, I hate those places. They're just too big. Well, it appears it's the only place in town to buy groceries, so it'll have to do. Besides, we can park the time and spaceship in the parking lot with the other RVs, and no one will ever notice. All right, let's go. Soon our heroes have parked their time and spaceship and are walking into the super soggy sugar mega mart. As they enter the store, they are shocked to find that the greeter is someone they know. Good afternoon, and welcome to Super. <gasps> Dr. Floyd? Dr. Steve? Good thing we got here. What boundless evil could you possibly be plotting for the poor, unsuspecting folks of this Megamart retail establishment? None. I work here. I knew it. I knew you'd be up to... You want to run that by me again? I work here, Floyd. I'm a greeter at the Super Soggy Sugar Megamart, okay? That's my job. What? Huh? What? Huh? Look, this is all your fault, Floyd. If you hadn't been foiling my evil plots to steal historical artifacts and then sell them on eBay, I wouldn't have to be working in this crummy, dead-end, minimum-wage job. Although, I do like this snappy blue vest they've given me. Well, I'll be. You keep this up, Dr. Steve. You might just reform and get on the straight and narrow. Never. This is only temporary, Floyd, until I can afford to buy a tank of diesel for my ship. Then, it's back to the time and space dream, and back to more plundering. It will only be a matter of time until I become the most powerful person in all of time and space. But until then, Floyd, have a pleasant shopping experience at Super Soggy Sugar Mega Mart. Here's your cart. <laughs> okay, Dr. Steve, thank you. <laughs> Come on, Dr. Grant, let's get this shopping done. As our heroes walk away, Dr. Steve turns and starts talking to his wrist. Fidget. Come in, fidget. I don't care what you're currently stalking. Listen, Floyd is here. I need you to keep an eye on him. I have a plan that will end this once and for all. No, listen to me. Drop whatever it is you're doing and start trailing Dr. Floyd. Now! They are heading to the dairy department. Follow them. Clean up on aisle 27. As Dr. Steve plots some fiendish way to get Dr. Floyd, let's catch up with Dr. Floyd, Dr. Grant, and Chips, who are now pricing Gouda. $8.15 for a pound of Gouda? Why, well, back in my day, cheese was a nickel. This is unbelievable. Uh, keep it down, Dr. Floyd. You're causing a scene. Well, this is ridiculous, Dr. Grant. When I was young, you could get a wagon filled with milk for half a penny. I don't think that's true. Why, well, I remember a time in this country when the butcher used to pay you two bits to take home a side of beef. Prices have just gone too high, Dr. Grant, it's just another... Ooh, looky here, Dr. Grant, a flashlight keychain for twenty-four sixty-three. Can we get one? No, Dr. Floyd, it's not in our budget. Stick to the list. Come on, Chips, I'm going to go get some soda. Dr. Grant and Chips leave Dr. Floyd for a minute to make a trip down the soda aisle. Little do they know they are being followed by a sock-shaped stock boy in a snappy blue vest who is walking along the top of the shelves behind them. Now let's see, Dr. Floyd likes Mountain Dew, Ensign Prairie likes Dr. Pepper, Christy only drinks that Penta water stuff, 
Yeah, I don't know. Something about the molecules in the water being smaller. I'll get a case of Diet Coke for me. <laughs> no, Chips. You know what soda does to your insides. We'll pick up a case of oil for you to drink before we leave. <laughs> I know, I know. It's okay. You know, I'm allergic to... Hey! <laughs> I just thought I saw something moving up on the top of that shelf. Fidger quickly ducks down behind a bag of super soggy sugar salsa chips, panicked that he's been spotted. His nervous shaking causes the whole shelf to shake, which causes an economy-sized bottle of super soggy sugar soda to fall from the shelf and break open squarely on Chips' head, dousing the plucky robot in sticky sweetness. <laughs> oh no, Chips! Quick, let's go to housewares and get some towels! As Dr. Grant rushes to dry off Chips, let's join up with our hero, Dr. Floyd, who is now in the checkout line with three shopping carts filled with items. As he gets up to the register, he's shocked to find that the cashier is none other than that evil mastermind, Dr. Steve. Oh, great. It's you again. Just ring up the groceries and don't give me any more of your guff. Yeah, I'll ring up your groceries, all right. Where's that annoying protege of yours and that little robot? Oh, they're around here somewhere, I'm sure. Probably in the toy aisle. I need a price check on an extra small size beanie. Uh, yeah, I don't need that. You can put that aside. Oh, okay. Cancel the price check on the extra small size beanie. Oh, jeez. And please price check an extra small size hairbrush. Uh, I don't need that either. Oh, okay, sir. Cancel the price check on the extra small size hairbrush. Oh, boy. Need a price check on an extra small size can of hairspray. Hey, hairspray doesn't come in sizes. Oh, sorry. I just like saying that you have a small head. Keep bringing things up, funny boy. Just then, Dr. Floyd is joined by Dr. Grant and a still soggy Chips. There you are. Where have you two been? Chips had a bit of an accident, Dr. Floyd. I'll explain on the ship. Your total is $238.09. Would you like to pay with a credit card? Uh, yeah. Here. Thank you, sir. Now, I just need you to sign here, please. Oh, okay. Hmm, wait a minute. What does this fine print at the bottom say? Oh, well, that's just the standard. Purchaser agrees to pay the amount above thingy. I see that, but what's this finer print under the fine print? I have to get out my bifocals here. Um, let's see. The endorser above agrees to turn over all his inventions, including his time and space travel device, to Dr. Steve and agrees to stop following Dr. Steve throughout time and space under penalty of law. Uh, well... <laughs> we'll be paying cash. Thanks. Curse you, Dr. Floyd. Foiled by good old American currency and a pair of bifocals. That's right, Dr. Steve. The buck stops here, and so does your evil plot. Let's go, Dr. Grant. Our heroes head off to the parking lot to load all their groceries into their time and spaceship. Where will Dr. Floyd and his crew head to next? Will the soda spilled on chips have any negative effects on the little robot? And just how long will it take Dr. Steve to raise enough money for a tank of diesel? At the current diesel prices and my current salary, probably a million years. Find out next week on the radio adventures of Dr. Floyd. This episode of the radio adventures of Dr. Floyd is brought to you by ActionFigureRacks.com. What do you collect? Golly. Good morning. We hope you're enjoying Saturday Story Circle. Get enough cereal? How's the coloring going? You can always join us tomorrow on Mutual with the Sunday Showcase, original audio drama from the United Artists of Audio, right here on Mutual. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for exciting audio drama every day or find the Sunday Showcase feed in your favorite podcast players.